Hey fans, it's that time again. We got $20 in our pocket. We need to find something to eat and something to play. Let's get out there and see what we can find. was a cold and rainy night in Portland, Oregon. I needed a new video game, and thus it was not unusual that I found myself at a GameStop. All right, so for today's gaming selection, we've gone off the beaten path just a little bit. Now, in the past, we've done PS4 games, we've done Switch games, and uh, you know, I'd even made mention that I do not own an Xbox One. Well, over the holiday season, I have changed that. Ended up picking myself up an Xbox One S, so now it opens up my horizons a little bit, allows me to play a little bit more, and deliver better reviews for y'all. So, in honor of that, I ended up picking up Micro Machines World Series on the Xbox One. I got this at GameStop for about $10, and I was curious about this one because of my love for the NES game. Now, for those of you that hadn't played it, the NES game is fantastic. Uh, definitely worth the play. Now let's see if this one holds up. Welcome to Micro Machines! Once the game boots up, you'll see that there's a bunch of different gameplay options. I'm gonna go ahead and try to just get into the quickest one possible, just to get into the game. Now, the bad news is that like most modern games, this one did not appear to come with an instruction manual. The good news is, apparently it starts you out with a tutorial. Let's learn how to play. As the tutorial starts, you're dumped into a race right away. You start off as the police officer, and I notice that there's a couple of fun things in the background, such as the Hungry Hungry Hippos and some G.I. Joe paraphernalia. That's a fun change of pace from the Nintendo version. After the singles race, they throw three opponents at you that are AI controlled. This lets you know how you would compete against Three, others. Two, one, go! Similar to games like RC Pro Am and Super Mario Kart, you're provided with different power ups and weapons with which you can use to defeat your opponents and get an advantage in the race. The power ups are Nerf brand. So along with the previously mentioned Hungry Hungry Hippos and G.I. Joe, you'll see that there's a lot of Hasbro crossover in this one. And since I'm a bit of a toy collector myself, I think this is a huge positive. Next up in the tutorial is the battle mode. And this one seems to involve some level of maybe capture the flag or hitting checkpoints. And once we've hit all of the checkpoints, the real battle begins and the enemies begin to spawn. The first couple of enemies that they throw at you look like nondescript tanks, but all of a sudden I see a very familiar vehicle in a Cobra Hiss! It's pretty rad to see that the G.I. Joe connection is not just in the background. As cool as it was to be interacting with my buddies from Cobra, I have to admit this battle mode was not very fun for me and I found it kind of difficult to control. I was pretty happy to get in those last few hits and move on to the next mode as soon as I could. Unfortunately, it seemed as though I was not done with the battle mode yet. The next section of the tutorial had me working on the special powers and abilities that my character had. While I'm sure that these are ultimately useful in a battle, I really don't want to be battling anymore. With the tutorial complete, it was time to move on to a different mode. Hopefully something I enjoy better than that battle mode. It looks like I had three options when I go to AI matches, and they were race, battle, and elimination. Having tried the other two in the tutorial, I thought it was time to try out elimination and see what it was all about. What's great is that now that we're not in the tutorial and we're in the live game, I can see the character select screen, and there's quite a few different vehicles that you can pick from. It's a nice selection. So I've selected my vehicle and we're lined up for what looks like a race. 
I'm still not entirely sure that I know what elimination is. But because it's still my nature to reach for the D-pad and not for the control stick on a modern controller, I found out what elimination is real quickly. The gist of it is that it's still a race, but instead of winning by laps, what you're trying to do is knock all of the opponents off of the screen. Once you force the screen to scroll past them, they are eliminated, and thus they're no longer in the race. It becomes a last man standing situation. It's also at this point that I notice that the AI-controlled characters are named Spider, Cherry, Dwayne. This is all the characters from the original NES game. This is really a sequel. That was kind of a cool surprise. Admittedly, this mode took quite a long time, as the competition was pretty fierce, and there was a lot of back and forth between me and the AI opponents. That being said, it was a really fun mode, and I think it's probably my favorite of the three that I've played. You came first! Now that we've done some gaming, we've still got $10 left to go and find something to eat. Let's see what we end up with. All right, folks. Today's food option is Long John Silver's. It's a pirate-themed seafood restaurant. Kind of a regional favorite. Depending on where you're from, you may or may not have heard of them. We had a ton of them back in Arizona, and I would frequent them often. However, here in the Pacific Northwest, there's not very many. I was very fortunate to find out that there is one location in a suburb of Portland, pretty close to where I live, so I was very fortunate to go and check it out. Uh, now, full disclosure, everything there is fried, so if that's not your jam, this is probably not your place to go. I, and I am not kidding. The fries are fried, the hush puppies, the fish, the chicken, the shrimp. Hell, I'm surprised they didn't deep fry the coleslaw, though honestly, if they did, I'd probably buy it and enjoy it. Anyway. Let's see how it turns out. As I'd mentioned, Long John Silver is kind of a rarity in my area. I was equal parts confused and excited when I saw that it was a combo Taco Bell Long John Silver, but today we would only be partaking of the Long John Silver half of that equation. I ended up ordering one of the variety platters, featuring a couple pieces of fried fish, a handful of fried shrimp, some fries, coleslaw, and a drink. Admittedly, I'm not usually a coleslaw kind of guy, but hey, when in Rome, right? And, all things considered, not bad. Now that I can confidently tell my mother that I've eaten some vegetables, it's time to see if the rest of the fried goodness holds up to my memories. First up is the shrimp. The batter is crispy, the inside is hot and fresh. Gotta say, pretty tasty. Next up is the item that Long John Silver's is famous for, and that is their fish plank. It has the same batter as the shrimp, which is equally crispy and delicious, and the inside of the fish is very tasty and flaky. Man, I'm enjoying this! Having grown up in a Filipino household, one of our staple condiments was always vinegar. So, one of the exciting things for me about Long John Silver is that it's one of the only fast food places where I can get a bottle of vinegar with all of my food. And when I say all of my food, I mean literally all of my food. Everything I get here is just a vessel for vinegar. Alright fans, we've spent some time playing some Micro Machines on the Xbox One. We've spent some time talking about what I thought of Long John Silver's. You know, between the two things, it's like a weird nostalgia trip. What year is it? Like 1992? It's not a bad thing. Anyway, both of them pretty positive overall, but it wouldn't be an episode of TV Dinner unless I show you that power ranking in Ranger Score. Let's see how it all pans out. All right, sports fans, you know what time it is. It's time for that power ranking. First up, we've got Micro Machines World Series on the Xbox One. It's a clear sequel to the NES Classic and gets bonus points for featuring the Cobra Hiss. It's an above average game and especially cool for that $10 price point. We're gonna give this one a respectable 4 out of 6 Rangers. Next up is the Long John Silver Fish and Shrimp Combo Platter. Delicious, batter fried, crispy, and filling, an excellent value, and quite tasty. This one's ranking in at the all important Six Rangers. It's an Ultra Zord! The winning combination of Long John Silver and Micro Machines on the Xbox was clearly $20 well spent, with a very high 10 out of 12 points. As always, thanks to the mini bosses for the use of their music, and we'll see you next time on TV Dinner.